What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is going to be called The Trinity Explained in 5 Minutes. Um, I did a reaction video to all the denominations explained in under 12 minutes. Uh, in one part of the video I said the Trinity does not make sense to me and it will never make sense to me because it doesn't make sense, okay? And somebody commented and he said, oh, they just, po they just posted a video about the Trinity explained in 5 minutes. So here I am. I'm trying to understand the Trinity because it does not make sense to me and it will never make sense to me. It's three and one, one and three. Okay, let's get into it. No disrespect, it's just critiques. Why is the Trinity so important? It's the Christian belief that makes Christianity Christianity okay. because it's how we know who God is. If we don't. Okay, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. So they're not. Okay. So he is, he's not him. So the father is not the son. The son is not the, the spirit and the spirit is not the father, but they're all gods. So one God, two God, three gods. Okay. If we don't have the Trinity, then we don't have the Christian God and we don't have Christianity. It sounds like paganism to me so far. No disrespect. This is just my opinion and I mean no disrespect. So how do we know what the Trinity is? Well, from nature, we can know what God is, that there's one God who made everything, but only from the Bible can we know who God is. Okay, so the scripture, the Bible, uh, it's, that's iffy. There's multiple scriptures from multiple denominations. The, the Catholics might have more, I think. And then the Jehovah's probably have a different one. And then there's the King James, the NIV, the all that. And they're all different. They have, some of them have verses that the others don't have. So which one is the true one? So you're saying scripture scripture by who where's the scripture of jesus i don't want to get don't give me the scripture of paul john and all that give me the scripture of jesus but that's my critique christianity is the religion where we worship christ we worship him because he's god but he's also okay so jesus christ is god the son of the father who is he's a son so that means this right here was before this okay that's how the son becomes. The father is first and the son after. Okay. Also God. And they so the father is also God. So the father was God before the son became God. Okay. So he was before. All they right? both send their spirit. Who is so they both send. So there's a whole other entity right here now. So the spirit goes into both. Okay. Also God. This is called the Trinity. which is And it's also God. Why are you sending the spirit into the father into the son? Okay. Short for triunity to explain how God is three in one. God has one nature. A nature is the thing that makes a thing what it is. So nature is what? Okay. So to say the father, son, and spirit are all God is to say they all have everything that makes God, God. Okay. So why are those? Give me the things that make God, God. I want to know what that, what, that, what, what that is. And then we can judge from there. They're all, all powerful. All powerful, okay. All see, I don't agree with this. In the Bible, Jesus is not all knowing because he was ignorant of the hour. That's ungodlike. So you can't be God and not know the hour. There's also another part of the the Bible where God, uh, where Jesus does not know something about like the figs or something like that. That's ungodlike. Some people are gonna make the 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 claim, oh, oh well, he was in his human nature. Okay, so to me, God cannot become a human. And you're going to be like, oh, are you pointing a cap on God that God cannot become anything? He can do everything. Okay, and I'm going to tell you this right here. Can God become Satan? Because it's unbefitting for God to become Satan. Satan. Same thing. I can ask you, can God create a rock that he can't pick up? Can he? Or can God cease to exist? Deletes himself. So he's not existing anymore. Those are things that you need to think about. He's not all-knowing. Jesus literally said, only the Father knows. So he has authority. He's always, Jesus is always answering to the Father. All-knowing, eternal, and they share the same will, mind, and nature. Really? Because when Jesus was on the cross, he was asking not to be on the cross. He was crying. 
So was he willingly on the cross? He was not willingly on the cross. He said, take this cup away from me. He doesn't want to be on the cross. So he wasn't willingly on the cross. So these things that, and the Christians is somehow they're going to try to justify it. However, they are Blind three distinct persons. Belief. A person's not the same thing as a thing. A person is only defined in relation to other persons. So the three persons of the Trinity have distinct roles in terms of how they relate to us. The Father okay. creates us, the Son redeems us, and the Spirit changes us. This is anecdotal. You, you, you meet people from different denominations and you be like, oh, I got the Holy Spirit in me. So, but you guys say this one is wrong and that one is wrong and that one is wrong. But you have the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit. One of you guys is lying. But even so, these actions can't be separated from one another. But before we were created, before anything except God existed, the Father, Son, and Spirit were only distinct in relation to one another. Yeah, but how do we know this? Like I said, it's what Scripture reveals. The Bible. Okay, then then it goes back. The Bible. <laughs> Give me the Scripture of Jesus. I don't want the Scripture of somebody inspired by God. The Bible's clear that there's only one God, and the Father is God, but Jesus the Son is also God, and the Holy. Okay, matter of fact, there was multiple people in the, the Bible that were called God. Or no, not yeah, God and Son of God too. Multiple people are called sons of God. The Holy Spirit is God. And these are not just three forms of the same person because we see them interacting with one another. In Matthew 3, the Father declares Jesus to be the Son and sends the Holy Spirit upon him. In Isaiah 48, the Son says that God has sent him along with his Spirit. And in Zechariah 2, the Lord declares that he is coming, and you will know that the Lord has sent him. Now let's clear up some common okay. misunderstandings. Some people think the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are really just three forms of God. But that's a heresy called modalism. The Bible says that the Father, Son, and Spirit interact with each other, which can't happen if they're just... So they interact. They all have the separate, separate entities. So they're different from each other. So that's three gods. Three forms of the same person. Some people think that the Father, Son, and Spirit are really just three parts of God. But that's also heresy called partial... Okay. Partialism. Partialism. Because it says that the Father, Son, and Spirit... Which some of the people in, in, in the conversation were saying. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. There are really just one third of God, but God can't be divided into parts. Exactly. Each person of the Trinity is fully God. So, that so that's one, two, three. Three gods. That's also heresy. Some people think the Father, Son, and Spirit are three different beings that just sort of work together. But that's a heresy called tritheism, and that goes against the definition of who God is. The Bible is very clear that there's only one God who has existed before everything else. So if there's three beings that have always existed, then God is not really the first thing to exist at all. Now another error is that some people think within the Trinity, the Son submits to the Father eternally. He does submit to the Father. The Bible literally says that. But that's also heresy called subordinationism. But it's easy to see why people fall into this error, because the Bible does speak of Jesus submitting to the Father. Exactly. <laughs> he is submitting. And he's saying, you're greater than I. You're greater than I. But the Bible also speaks of Jesus doing stuff God doesn't do, like getting thirsty and not knowing stuff. Wait, hold on, what? It also speaks of Jesus doing stuff God doesn't do, like getting thirsty and not knowing stuff. Yes. That's a human, so he cannot be God. <laughs> stuff. The reason for this is while Jesus is truly God, he's also truly human. He has a tr so that's like a, that's a square circle, truly divine and a truly human nature. Two things cannot exist on one thing. It's either you're fully God or fully human. You cannot be both at the same time because they're, that's ungodlike. You can't be half half. You can't be hundred and hundred. Because in a person, a human, he can make a mistake. If you're 100% human, you're capable of making a mistake. If you're 100% God, you're incapable of making mistakes or incapable of not knowing. So these things are really things Jesus does according to his human nature. So in eternity, the Son does not submit to the Father, but Jesus does submit to the Father according to his human nature. What? Because he's the perfect example of a human and all humans are supposed to submit to the Father. So if you're trying to, but he's, a, but he's a human, a hundred percent human, a hundred percent God. 
All right. To explain the Trinity, don't use analogies because those almost always end up falling into one of the heresies we just discussed. Don't use analogies. There we go. Don't you basically saying don't use your brain. Don't don't think critically. All right. Disgust. Some people say the Trinity's like the three phases of water, but that's modalism. Some people say it's like the sun, its light, and its heat, but that says that God rather than wrong. Shamrock, but that's partialism. Okay. Also, what the heck? Luckily, the church wrote a document that explains it called the Athanasian Creed, and all of the historic churches agree on what's in the creed. But why is this stuff so confusing? Well, also, also, in the Bible, God says he's not the author of confusion. If God is infinite and we are finite, we shouldn't expect... I've read the Bible. I've read it multiple times. ...to be able to wrap our minds around the infinite. But think about it. If we were making this stuff up, we would make it a lot more easy to understand. That's why all the pseudo-Christian groups use heresies to make the Trinity easier to understand so people will fall for what they say. But God offers eternal life to everyone, including you. So you can come to the Father if you're united to the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you believe in Jesus Christ, go to your local church if it believes in the Trinity and they'll tell you what to do. And ultimately, the fact- I do believe in Jesus. Great prophet. Actually, he said he was a prophet in the Bible, too. He, he was saying, right, right guy, he's a prophet. Um, I do believe, I don't believe to the extent where I say he's God, he's a message, messenger of God, and he's the one that's relating the message to us, to, from God. So I do believe in Jesus. Actually, I cannot be a Muslim without being, without believing in Jesus. We just don't put him into God's status. And we also do not not believe in him. We also have to believe in him like we also believe in all the other prophets. That makes much more sense to me than ever than the tra then the training will ever make sense to me ever so yeah uh no disrespect if you watch this video i hope you guys enjoyed it make sure you guys like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys again next video